good afternoon to everybody who is joining us from different parts of Europe uh, and so the neighboring regions and good morning to those who are joining us from the United States. Um, once again, uh, this is a series of discussions devoted to Bulgaria, different aspects of uh, domestic foreign policy of different problems uh, that are part of uh, countries' uh, presence and future. Uh, our series is part of the Engaging Central Europe program of the German Marshall Fund, which is a nonpartisan policy uh, organization committed to the idea that the United States and Europe are stronger together. You can read more about the program on our website. And uh, I would like to remind you that today's discussion will be recorded and you can access it later on our YouTube channel uh, of the German Marshall Fund. Please write your questions in the chat. Um, hopefully you will be able to also uh, contribute to the discussion with your comments and I will make sure that uh, they are brought to the attention of our excellent speakers. My name is Asia Metodieva. I'm a visiting fellow of uh, the German Marshall Fund of the United States, and I have the pleasure to moderate uh, the today's discussion devoted to the problems uh, that the LGBTQ community faces in Bulgaria. Uh, without further delay, I would like to introduce uh, our speakers, and I would like to thank them, uh, all of them, once again, that they agreed to, to speak today. Uh, because there are a lot of issues uh, that are uh, part of, uh, of, uh, of the, the, the problems that the community faces in Bulgaria, and uh, each of our speakers will, uh, will point to, to different aspects. I would like to start with uh, Denitza Lubanova, uh, who is uh, representing uh, one of the key organizations working uh, on uh, LGBTQ issues in Bulgaria, organization Deisfie. She's a lawyer, she's also an activist and uh, one of the, the figure, key figures uh, um, speaking uh, about, about the problems uh, of the LGBT community in, in Bulgaria. Dmitry Bogdanov is, is all, also another uh, key member uh, of, of uh, the uh, NGO sector. Uh, he's a co-founder of the organization GLASS. Uh, and, um, Finally, Milena Dokova, who is also a, a lawyer and uh, uh, is um, uh, she she was uh, defending uh, like a, a trans transgender person two years ago uh, in a key course uh, key uh, key um, court case before the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, uh, she is uh, also a lawyer at the EKMGF and Partners firm. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, Without further delay, I would like to uh, give the floor to each of you for uh, short introductory remarks, um, short, but let's say 15 to 18 minutes to actually pre present your key arguments. Uh, and after that, uh, we are going to have the time for Q&A. And uh, once again, everybody who is part of our discussion today, part of the audience, please contribute with your questions and comments. I would like to start with uh, Denitza, please. Uh, the floor is yours for your introductory remarks. Thank you, Asia, and thank you for organizing uh, this meeting. Um, as you said, I'm um, uh, co-chair currently of LGBTI organization Deistvie and a practicing lawyer. Um, I will share um, my screen in order to make uh, uh, like few visuals uh, on the situation of um, uh, LGBTI families in Bulgaria. I'm sorry, just to see if... Um, I don't know if you're seeing. Um, so LGBTI organization in Bulgaria, um, we committed um, a research back in 2000 and. 18 uh, on the situation of uh, LGBTI families and the lack of legislation. So um, Bulgaria, although a European Union uh, member state since 2007, um, except of anti-discrimination law and um, from last year, um, uh, the changes uh, that we managed to, mm, to 
to make uh, in the criminal code and uh, and adding the uh, sexual orientation as aggravating circumstances in 10 articles of the criminal code. Except of this, there is no um, legislation whatsoever regarding and um, recognizing the families of same-sex families, uh, of same-sex couples. Um, having said that, um, so there is a constitutional limitation of uh, what marriage is, and the Bulgarian constitution defines it as a union between a man and a woman, and uh, um, the legislation in Bulgaria uh, does not have the legal institute of uh, recognition and uh, civil partnerships. Um, so what um, our organization has been doing in the last um, in the in the last decade actually is through the legal defense program of the organization we are bringing cases to the European Court of Human Rights or Court of Justice of the European U Union in order to um, um, to have the so-called uh, strategic litigation cases. Uh, that are eventually going to bring uh, to bring uh, uh, legislational changes, changes in the le legislation. As we discovered uh, during these 10 years that in the lack of political will, the litigation is basically one of the few ways um, in order to, to bring this uh, positive change in the legislation. So, um, Quickly going to explain a few striking uh, examples of uh, strategic litigation, and with this, trying to um, to explain how big the problem is in Bulgaria. Um, so, in two thousand and seventeen, uh, Daystia started leading the case of Lilia. Uh, Lili Babulkova and Darina Kuyuva, which um, um, they were a couple who con concluded marriage uh, in um, in the UK back in 2016, and uh, they came back to Bulgaria and wanted their um, their marriage to be recognized in Bulgaria and to change their family status in their documents. Uh, in the in the municipality of Sofia, they received refusals in all instances uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, back in 2020, we submitted um, a complaint to the European Court of Human Rights. In September 2023, the European Court of Human Rights uh, published their uh, judgment uh, against Bulgaria. Um, stating that the lack of legislation of Bulgaria is um, uh, is um, is breaching the right the fam the, the the right to family life um, in Article Eight of the European Convention of Human Rights. And Bulgaria is obliged that thus Bulgaria is obliged to have uh, to, to change the legislation and to have. Um, uh, to have legislation which recognizes the families of same-sex couples. Um, since then, uh, and um, I, I, I guess my fellow lawyer Milena Dokova will talk about um, the non-implementation of the case, of the uh, of the decisions, uh, the judgments of the European Court of Human Rights, but. Uh, so this is uh, although there is a judgment against Bulgaria of uh, Huyuva and Babulkova versus Bulgaria, we are still pending implementation of this case, and this implementation requires Bulgaria uh, to change the legislation of the country. So it's going to take quite some time in order to uh, for this to become. Uh, reality um another um another very big case that uh we are working on and is very 
uh, pointing case for Bulgaria and um, the lack of legislation and recognition of the families of uh, same-sex couples uh, in the country is the case uh, which we um, which we led before before the court of the Grand Chamber of the Court of Justice of the European Union. Um, the case mostly famous with the name uh, Baby Sara. So Baby Sara was born in a family of a Bulgarian and a UK mother, but she was born in uh, Spain. And uh, in Spain, she was issued a Spanish birth certificate, but she couldn't get a Spanish and a UK citizen because of uh, formalities and the legislation in the UK and in Spain. The only possibility for for uh, baby Sara to become uh, any citizen, so to have any citizenship, was to um, to ask for for a Bulgarian citizenship. Um, what so we we received the refusal uh, from Sofia municipality, um, district Pancherevo, and um, um, and what the the Sofia municipality was stating is because of the lack of legislation to recognize the same sex families, Bulgaria cannot grant cannot recognize the marriage concluded between these two women uh, back in the in Spain, and uh, uh, Bulgaria cannot grant baby Sara Bulgarian citizenship because um, because they don't recognize this relationship which was created between the two mothers um the we complained against the uh, the judgment of the the decision of the of sofia municipality and uh, our case was sent to uh, to was referred to the court of justice of the european union so basically what the Court of Justice of the European Union stated in their final ruling against Bulgaria was that Bulgaria is not obliged to issue a birth certificate of the child because the citizenship um, uh, is something which this, this, the decision for granting citizenship belongs to the member states, uh, but Bulgaria is obliged to issue a uh, a passport or an ID card to the child, regardless of the, of the of, uh, firstly issuing a birth certificate. This um, uh, the the judgments of the Court of Justice of the European Union are, are uh, Union are obliged for the member states to be implemented, and they become part of the Union law, and from there part of the uh, member states law. Um, nevertheless, the judgment was, the ruling of the court was published in 2021. Uh, and in, in March last year, so in March, 2023, the Supreme Administrative Court of Bulgaria stated that they're not gonna comply with, um, in their final decision on this case, that they're not gonna comply with uh, uh, with the ruling of the Court of Justice and based on evidences that they uh, collected themselves, um, they stated that Sara is not a Bulgarian citizen and with this they decided to close the case. What, um, what my legal team is currently doing is we started the so-called infringement procedure against Bulgaria so um, we are proving to the European Commission uh, a systematic uh, breach of the union law. And um, we are expecting in May, June this year, the European Commission to open the formal communication with the government of Bulgaria for not complying with the EU law on this topic. What this brought to on a, on a bigger scale uh, very quickly, uh, because I think I'm running out of time. Uh, what the case of baby Sarah brought to to the uh, to the more global um, 
global field is um because of the because of these problems in cross border situation and parenthood, um and not being able to um to recognize the parenthood establishing one member state to another when it comes to uh, member states in Eastern Europe, especially Bulgaria and Romania. So the European uh, the European Commission made a proposal for um, for uh, for a regulation aimed at harmonizing the rules of private international law as regards to publishing birth certificates in cross border situation. Um, this is an ongoing process. It still needs to be voted before the European Parliament, but there is a big group within the European Parliament um, in favor of this regulation to be voted in any uh, future positive uh, developments on the European elections. Um, so I think this is in brief uh, uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, introduction to the problems that uh, same-sex couples uh, face uh, in Bulgaria. Um, We're going to talk a little bit more about what you expect from the upcoming European elections and, uh, let's say, the next parliament and the next commission. Uh, but now I would like to give the floor to Dimitar Bogdanov, um, who, as far as I know, is going to focus on more on the social dimensions uh, of, of the issues faced by the community in Bulgaria. The, the floor is yours. Thank you, Asya. Uh, yes, as um, Dimitar described very, um, very well the legislation and the um, situation regarding laws in Bulgaria, but unfortunately the obstacles um, on the LGBTI community faced in Bulgaria are not limited only to this uh, uh, lack and deficit in uh, in, in the laws. Um, so um, I, I would give some examples and explain how uh, this prevents uh, LGBT people to live their life and to feel uh, part of the society. Uh, so um, I will also share a screen which uh, so first I'm Dmitry Bogdanov, uh, co-founder of uh, Glass Foundation and currently manager of Sofia Pride. Um, we started almost 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, now we are mainly focusing on community organizing, social campaigns, and um, communi communication, working with uh, with uh, journalists, and um, running the Rainbow Hub, which is the, um, the only one non-commercial uh, community space, safe space in uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, I, since the topic of the of today's meeting is uh, from struggle to strength, I would start with um, one uh, notorious example in Bulgaria how um, how our um, how our, the attacks against us uh, actually led to a positive um, outcome, and uh, this is the attack uh, against the Rainbow Hub, which was. Um, um, in, 2019, and uh, the attack uh, happened before the before the uh, presidential elections, when a presidential uh, candidate um, stormed the place and uh, with with a mob of 20 uh, football hooligans, and uh, that's what uh, that was the result of, uh, of their attack, but. Um, Three years later, we are now uh, actually in a brand new premises um, uh, in the city center. Um, with um, now we renovated uh, an old apartment, uh, which was given to us by the um, organization of Bulgarian Jews, and now that's the new place, the opening of the place. Mm, uh, we are um, running it together with. Um, Abilities Foundation, uh, which is um, uh, the other LGBTI foundation in Bulgaria, which we work very 
closely with. Uh, so about the challenges and the obstacles, I would start with one that is maybe not first of mind, but is actually the root of most of our problems. And it's the um, lack of visibility. Um, visibility in any sense, like uh, access to funds and access to uh, public resources, uh, denied access to, um, to any kind of um, um, participation in the, in the public life. Uh, it's not a secret that in Bulgaria there are no LGBTI public figures, uh, and and that's not only because uh, that's not because um, we are missing brave people, but it's because the environment is so hostile that um, it prevents them to come out. It's considered as weakness, and um, and even in the parliament is used as a slur and uh, base for attacks against uh, against. Uh, not only members of our community, but also any other public figures who stand uh, uh, behind us and who uh, speak openly about uh, against uh, discrimination. Uh, so um, this lack of visibility is also very much regarding our our public campaigns, which are. Uh, almost every time being violated and attacked and destroyed. Uh, that happened six years ago with our first campaign uh, showing uh, same-sex couples in front of significant uh, buildings in Bulgaria. Uh, back then, the Commission Against Discrimination didn't find any uh, hate speech or um, discrimination in this uh, in this case. Uh, and um, Ah. And this was the campaign, and um, and finally, the uh, after the decision of the Commission Against Discrimination, the uh, appeal court uh, overthrew this decision. But then the Supreme Court um, again approved it, and now then you can say more about it. Uh, there is a case in the European uh, Court of Human Rights uh, as to. Um, and the uh, international support and leverage is something that we are uh, counting on, but definitely uh, the lack of any public support and uh, governmental support in Bulgaria is is hurting us very much. Uh, the other thing which uh, which um, the other area which is are very much excluded and like we are um we are completely uh it's completely closed door for, doors for us is uh, the education and schools um, public schools in bulgaria um, although there is a, a significant level of homophobia and bullying uh, but uh, there are almost no, no policy against this and um LGBT organizations are completely denied of working with public schools. Uh, we are currently working with some teachers, um, but if they openly uh, speak about it, they risk their their career. Um, as Dennis said, the, the political environment is also very toxic and very hostile. And uh, the LGBTI topic is actually used in every elections uh, by some political parties to gain uh, to gain voters. And uh, we have been uh, used as scapegoats um, for an election. Uh, so that's what we fear will happen this year again with the European and national elections, and that's what happened uh, when the rainbow was uh, was attacked uh, just in front of uh, presidential elections. Mm, in although there there has been some change, and uh, something that we are focusing very much 
the last couple of years is um, political engagement and uh, working with uh, with different political parties and that that actually proved to be maybe one of the most important tools to legislation change because uh, with all the um, requirements and uh, and decisions of European courts and things, the political establishment in Bulgaria is not uh, is not complying yet uh, to um, what we managed to uh, somehow um, achieve is to take us out from this marginalized corner that we have been put for so many years and to start speaking with them directly and to be able to put our case on the table. Um, but as I said, in the parliament, it's like the, 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 the toxic atmosphere is, um, is uh, very much hurting the whole society and, and our community specifically. Um, on um, another, another area of um, that we are working for and another obstacle that uh, we noticed um, in the very beginning when we started our work is uh, the lack of um, organized community. So this is something <clears throat> which has changed a lot. But uh, although, of course, there are uh, LGBTI people in Bulgaria, uh, there is no strong and um, organized community. So one of the main tools that uh, has that we developed and worked with for so many years uh, is Sofia Pride, of course, which uh, started as um, 16 years ago, uh, 50 brave people met with uh, 100 uh, far Nazis, but um, now we are more than 15,000 in, in Sofia and maybe the the biggest um, uh, civic gathering uh, in, in Sofia. Uh, so um, things are changing in Bulgaria and they are changing for, uh, for, for uh, in a positive way, um, but very slowly and um, yeah, and very uh, not, not in every area. Uh, we have some like solid data to prove this because we every year we are having um, surveys with um, the biggest um, agency um, in Bulgaria and there is a stable ten tendency for uh, um, better attitudes towards LGBTI people and towards um, our cause. Um, I hope uh, the politician will, will follow because this is actually our biggest concern. Mm, that's everything from me and I'm ready to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, your uh, introductory remarks. And um, I should probably mention that uh, we also recently published uh, an article in which we uh, we also mentioned that uh, basically no party in Bulgaria, as you as you said, in the Bulgarian parliament includes uh, the LGBTQ rights in, in, in their agendas. Um, and so far, there is no openly um, LGBTQ politician uh, in, in the country or there is no discussion or, or political discourse that is uh, constructive in this direction. Uh, I will be happy to hear more about uh, your uh, work with different uh, with different institutions, at local and national level. Um, but as you said, conservative attitudes uh, towards uh, homosexuality and transgender individuals continue to shape uh, public and political discourses. Uh, now I would like to uh, give the floor to um, Milana Dokova, uh, who will um, I I guess will continue the the conversation about uh, what legal uh, gender is. And gender is often um, a concept that appears uh, in political campaigns, as you as you mentioned, but what it means in, in legal terms, what bo the Bulgarian sta state understands and how it limits uh, the rights of uh, LGBTQ people 
please, uh, Milano Dokovo, the floor is yours. Hello, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I would like to say firstly that I'm very happy to participate in such a platform and to meet my fellow colleague uh, Lyubanova and uh, Mr. Bogdanov for the first time actually uh, in such a platform. Um, I, I wouldn't I would hate to begin by something rather pessimistic, but I would like to pick up on something that Mr. Bogdanov uh, said uh, in his final remarks, that his, uh, he considers that we are rather moving in a positive direction. Uh, unfortunately, my experience, uh, uh, at first glance, rather narrow, I mean, I, what I mean is that uh, my experience with the Bul Bulgarian legislation and seeing what, Bulga what Bulgarian courts render on this topic uh, makes me feel rather pessimistic. And um, I consider that we're moving further and further away from what I would call positive development. And I will explain what I mean. Um, my initial encounter with the rights of uh, transgender people was four years ago. And uh, I believe it, it started with a case, with a particular case, uh, with a person who contacted me and a transgender person uh, who had experienced, um, who had uh, initiated proceedings before national courts to change his data, his personal data in the in his ID and in his passport, because uh, he or she uh, consider, uh, considered himself uh, female. This is how uh, uh, I think it's more correctly to call she. So this is how I will perceive proceed. Uh, so she considered herself a female. However, her name and um, gender and the identity card were featured as male. Uh, this, was, this is a person who has the, all the necessary medical uh, documentation, uh, psychological reports, psychiatric reports, uh, everything which is necessary to prove that not only he is it is recognized that he has a state of being transgender, transsexual, how it is called in the medical documentation, but it was also uh, proven before national courts that this person was firmly convinced that he would like to be perceived by our community, by our society as she. However, what, uh, what national courts did was simply deny such a change uh, by saying that um, this contradicts Bulgarian national interest. Uh, it was not explained in the reasons of the court judgment what, what, the, what Bulgarian's national interest in this particular case means. Uh, what we can be sure of is that it was proven in this case that we had the individual, the, the, the interest of the individual uh, proven. It, uh, this is a person who is extremely intelligent, uh, very well educated, and this uh, change in the, uh, in, the, in the ID and in, in the passport is a precondition for, for her further development because, and this is an obstacle for her to, um, to apply for universities for certain jobs, because every time uh, she applies for such, uh, for, for university or simply for a job, uh, she has to encounter the, uh, the attitude of what, what is going on here. Why do we witness such a uh, disparity between uh, your appearance and what is featured in your ID cards. Uh, however, um, I think that so. So what what further happened is that we uh, we uh, applied to the court to the European Court of Human Rights, and we finally have a judgment um, um, against Bulgaria, in which it is said that 
uh, the national courts cannot simply uh, refuse such a change by the mere argument it contradicts the Bulgarian national interest, but should rather analyze the, the exact situation, analyze the proofs that they have, analyze the intention of the person and how he or she feels, and um, simply respect his right to private life, his right to, to self-determination, his right to uh, gender identity, to sex identity, uh, as it is called and uh, by the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, this is basically what Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights uh, protects, right to private life, right to uh, self-determination. Uh, however, um, since 2022, since September 2022, when we actually won this case, instead of um, reaching a rather quick and positive development, uh, I have been uh, witnessing uh, further challenges. And what is more interesting is that further challenges, I mean that uh, this is very mildly said, what we're actually facing is a total denial, a total refusal by the Bulgarian courts to, uh, to, uh, to respect uh, the binding force of this judgment. But what I find is more frustrating and which goes far beyond this particular case is that we had two um, judgments, which I would call milestones in which I think uh, feature um, and are indicative of this negative uh, development, which uh, brings us further away from the values, from the European values, from the values that we actually have in our constitution, which are respect for, for those people, who, for everyone, basically, uh, freedom, uh, solidarity, equality, humanity. These are all principles that we have in our constitution. However, in those two milestones judgment, judgments, um, first of all, which are those judgments I would like to mention, the judgment of the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Bulgaria. Uh, this judgment is uh, uh, 2021. And it said that according to Bulgarian constitution, the Bulgarian constitution recognizes only uh, two uh, genders, male, female, and there is no third uh, gender. However, um, what the, the, the reason this particular judgment is important as an indication of the moods is that, um, first of all, they said that, um, the, 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 the gender in which we are born in predetermines our uh, civil gender. Uh, so basically, uh, they laid the, con laid the basis for another judgment, which is of 2023. And this is the interpretative judgment of the highest court of cassation, which stated directly that the Bulgarian legal order does not, does not allow change in the uh, gender, uh, the way it is stated in our birth certificate, uh, from this way to stated in our birth certificates to the way it is featured in our ID. So basically, this is a direct hit against the rights of all the transgender people. Uh, um, the, the, very, uh, the very reasons of those judgments are based again on something which is called national interest, uh, on something which is called uh, orthodox culture, but those are just, um, you know, just blank words which are uh, mentioned without providing real explanation in what way could recognizing someone's uh, identity and gender uh, actually attack our national security or national interest. 
Um, so um, I believe that those uh, particular, I'm, I'm very frustrated by those judgments, first of all, because they uh, show clearly also something very, very bothering. And it is that Bulgarian courts refuse to uh, apply directly uh, the articles of the European Convention of Human Rights. And this is a convention to which Bulgaria is a party. And if uh, certain rights or certain legal procedures are absent in national legislation, then each one of us can, could simply uh, refer to the convention and expect that it is directly applied. And in this um, interpretative judgment from 2023, uh, our highest court of concession said, uh, no, we are not bound by the convention, which is uh, uh, for, for us lawyers and uh, people of law, this is uh, like some, uh, shocking. This is shocking uh, because we have in the constitution the, this, this te text which says that um, all the conventions, all international contracts that the that Bulgaria is a member of are obligatory to uh, for our courts and for our country. Uh, so uh, my point is that uh, the rights of transsexual and transgender people are seriously intimidated in Bulgaria. Uh, what uh, the, the, the situation in which they're put is a situation of total insecurity, uh, a, a continuing uh, situation of um, um, lack of perspective for the future because basically their future is blocked by the refusal of national authority to all, authorities and courts to recognize their rights. Um, and the only um, the only way this problem could be uh, could find a solution is by um, uh, by legal changes. However, I do not see the will for such legal changes to take place. Thank uh, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very you, much. Would you like to add something more here? Uh, I would I would just like to finish by saying that um, uh, I I find that there has been um, um, the, the whole issue with gender ideology as it is called um, I see it going back to 2018 when we also had this um, uh, refusal of the Constitutional Court to accept the Istanbul, the so-called Istanbul Convention. So it was again this uh, national interest topic going on, and it continues to be a highlight uh, reason for uh, refusing to grant rights to LGBT and transsexual people rights. If I'm not mistaken, indeed, the Istanbul Convention uh, boosted this uh, um, usage of, of of gender in in uh, in political discussions and 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 hate speech uh, uh, for the purpose of intimidating um, individuals and generally the community. Uh, uh, thank you, Milana Dokova. Uh, I would like to now um, uh, go back to Denitza Lubanova with a question about, so you mentioned all these uh, developments and uh, the, the, the fights that you are uh, basically have, having with, with Bulgarian institutions, the decisions uh, from the Court of uh, Justice of the EU and European Court of Human Rights. Without um, uh, this non-implementation uh, from, from the Bulgarian institutions, how do same-sex couples live in Bulgaria? What are the ways out on a daily basis when it comes to dealing with administration, with uh, with uh, uh, raising children uh, with uh, just uh, existing as normal citizens in 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 the country, which limits uh, their rights so to to that extent. Thank you, Asia, for the for the question. Um, just to add on uh, what uh, my colleague Melena uh, mentioned, 
I was talking about is um, the um, the interpretative ruling of uh, of the High Court of Cassation in Bulgaria, the ruling on the baby Sarah case, the Bulgaria not wanting to implement, not really not wanting to implement judgments of the European Court of Human Rights and the Court of Justice of the European Union is not uh, simply a problem of the LGBTI community in Bulgaria, it's a problem of the rule of law in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something very important to be underlined. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to mention it. Um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the everyday problem, um, I mean, the everyday life of uh, LGBTI families, I can, uh, what I can say is that um, it's really up to case by case in order to prove that the problem exists, exists as there is no legislation, as there are no, um, um, no researches on the life of LGBTI people. Uh, we have to prove case by case that there is really a significant impact on the lives of LGBTI uh, people and families uh, when it comes to discrimination against, against the community and uh, against the couples themselves. Um, so I will start from not being able to receive information on the status of of the medical status of your partner if the partner is in in the hospital, uh, not being able to um, to donate cells or um, or, or organs uh, even to your partner because you don't have a marriage concluded. Um, not being able to inherit your partner and uh, um, when it comes to raising children together, of course, the problem on one on the one person not being recognized as a parent to the child and with this bringing, of course, the, the same like uh, non-information on medical status and inheritance against. Um, but in all these cases, uh, as I stated, it's like in order to to show that there is discrimination, we need to bring these cases to the um, to the administration or to the courts. It really depends on the case. So how people are impacted? Um, um, a research that I, I don't know if I mentioned it. A research that uh, we have done back in twenty. 18 is showing more than 300 rights in the civil legislation of Bulgaria that LGBTI people are deprived of, of just because of the lack of legislation recognizing the families and the, the, the relationship between same-sex couples. Uh, so this is a very big number of, um, of rights that we are deprived of. And now going to uh, to uh, Dimitar Bogdanov with the next question. Um, but before that, I would like to encourage all of you uh, uh, who would like to to ask your questions, please post them in the chat. Uh, and I can see that there are some already. But before that, um, you mentioned that you are um, organizing Sofia Pride uh, and that you. Um, you 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 spoke of various channels of of hate speech. Um, my question is, with the latest uh, let's say amendments uh, to the criminal code and like uh, with with the discussion about domestic violence uh, last year, how do you think uh, the 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 conversation has changed? Uh, do you feel that there is uh, uh, more? Uh, political will, let's say, um, based on, on these amendments and these changes? Um, and on the other hand, do you face uh, hatred or or new uh, new forms of, of, of intimidation as uh, one of the key uh, people in the community trying to do community building as well? Uh, thank you, Asya. Uh, <clears throat> first, I uh, yeah, want to add something on that. Uh, what Milena said, uh, and it's also an answer to your question. 
um, there is, and we not only believe it, but we see it, there is a positive change, but not in every aspect. And transgender rights are really um, being like lagging behind and the, it's, uh, it's an area where we have no progress, even we have decline. And uh, positive change there is, but also it's not um, the same everywhere in the country. Sofia is uh, strikingly different from uh, from the countryside. And um, that's why in Sofia we have 15,000 people for Sofia Pride. Uh, in the same time, uh, in some other big cities in Bulgaria where uh, there were some attempts to for um, for LGBTI events, uh, they were met violently and uh, were attacked and so on. Uh, so um, we are um, moving in two speeds and in um, different areas we are advancing, but in some other areas we are uh, going backwards. Um, uh, the, um, what you um, said about um, the hatred and the um, uh, Sofia pride, that, that's true. Um, we are facing problems every year organizing it. Um, and um, it's, it's one, uh, one event a year. Uh, so um, actually the biggest problem we have are uh, throughout the rest of the, uh, the rest of the year. Uh, with um, with the everyday threats that um, LGBTI people suffer in Bulgaria, uh, it's um, uh, something that it's it's known that every majority doesn't recognize the and doesn't realize the the problems that um, minorities live with, and that's the case with uh, with uh, with our problems. We. We had last year a series of um, trainings and sensibilization trainings with uh, prosecutors, and uh, we realized that they actually don't know anything about our community, and they don't even um, suppose what kind of problems we face every day. So um, yes, there are a lot of uh, deficit in in the in the laws. But even those who are um, working with the law every day, even they are um, actually not um, realizing what 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 we miss, and um, and they because they they just take uh, everything they have for, for granted, and uh, that's that's a challenge to uh, to explain our case and to um, to to show our case. That's. Um, that's exactly what we do with um, with uh, working with uh, political parties. What 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 you uh, mentioned um, to um, to not only to explain them, but really to uh, to show them how this affects our life. And um, and uh, yes, I think there is some understanding already. Uh, I hope it's not going to be uh, like a single victory every 20 years. Uh, but um, yeah, there, there should be more, there should be more visibility again. There should be more people uh, coming out, more people um, come forward and uh, state their problems and everyday um, challenges. Uh, that's why actually in every campaign recently, like the last, like, uh, last couple of years, we are showing real same-sex families, uh, real people from the community uh, in order to not to be excluded from the society, in order to explain that we are part of the society. Even uh, this, uh, this year campaign for Pride uh, will be with uh, real uh, LGBTI persons who are who are also gay or transgender, but doctors, um, and, uh, engineers, and uh, <clears throat> teachers. We have one teacher who 
mm, was so brave to mm, participate in the campaign. Uh, so that we showed it. Yeah, we 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 are literally everywhere, and we deserve the same treatment as everyone else. And now, Milena Dokova, about the legal strategies, because you mentioned the the complete denial from Bulgarian courts. Uh, what are the what is the, the way to fight back in a way? And we, we have all these decisions coming from and conclusions coming from the European courts. Uh, we also have like a ongoing political uh, limbo and political crisis in Bulgaria, which probably also affects the long term uh, uh, decisions and, uh, and efforts in, in this direction. Um, but when it comes to, um, let's say, uh, the the way to to respond, uh, are there any any ways to respond to this uh, complete denial? And how do you uh, do do you see it as a strategic state uh, approach? Because you mentioned that uh, there was also like a, a reference to a national interest uh, in in one of the core decisions. Could you please unmute uh, the microphone so we can hear you? Sorry. Uh, the national interest, whatever whatever stands behind it in the uh, in the minds of the of those who are supposed to apply law and conventions and protect our rights. Um, Speaking of a strategy, what strategy could we offer? In the first place, uh, if we start with the particular cases that we have. Um, uh, colleague Dubinova said uh, that she has cases which, yes, won before the European Court of Human uh, Rights, but basically, so what? Because uh, right, I have those cases which we have positive judgments against Bulgaria, but since they are not implemented by the national authorities, but they are not respected by the national courts, the result is that those people who are uh, real people, living people, continue to have their rights uh, disrespected, uh, not, not uh, and uh, and cannot proceed further with their lives, as I basically said. So this have this this disrespect for um, for those judgment has direct implement, implementation and direct repercussions for everyone's life. Um, so one one possible way to 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 basically. Um, fight against this uh, this refusal by the highest high courts to apply the convention is to rely that uh, to rely on the lower national courts when facing another case a new case to simply apply either the convention on human rights or the bulgarian constitution because the bulgarian constitution still has uh, the very fundamental rights that which have to be respected there they are there so um we appeal to those national courts we appeal to those national judges uh to apply higher norms directly and thus provide respect for human rights another possible way is to simply um criticize the approach which we publicly to, to make it public not to um, not to keep the debate only in the in the very narrow law circles for example when it regards uh, judgments but to make it public to make it part of the public debate um, uh, so that uh, greater maybe public pressure could be imposed on um, on the way those cases are viewed. Um, maybe you see already the uh, the the question to to the other two speakers. I think it's mostly a question to them, uh, Danica and Dimitar, regarding uh, the help uh, that can potentially come, uh, and it's coming from international donor uh, donor organizations and and community. 
what are the ways uh, to uh, to support uh, organizations in Bulgaria uh, more effectively? And what are the specific issues and topics and also approach, approaches that donors should uh, focus on and consider? I'm actually happy that today we fo we focus on like um, several um, different but also overlapping topics. So it was uh, it's been a great uh, um, overview. Um, but like if you if you can tell us a little bit more about um, let's say your your uh, your needs as organizations. Whoever wants to start first, Denitsa or or Dimitar. I was saying that Dimitar unmuted himself, but I can go on. Um, I will start with an example. Um, and uh, here, there are, we are basically all the people that participated in this very, very big change in the Bulgarian legislation. So, um, as it was few times mentioned briefly, but not explicitly, uh, in July last year, 2023, um, together with the, all the LGBTI organizations in Bulgaria, with the help of the National Assembly, we managed to make certain changes in the Bulgarian Criminal Code and adding aggravating circumstances as uh, uh, on the basis of sexual orientation. Uh, but this uh, this fight started uh, 30 years ago, and um, the legal company uh, that Milena Dokova is working uh, with, uh, they had a very big impact on how this pro like big process uh, developed. Uh, so um, the the AKMGF company litigated the case of. Uh, uh, Christina Stoyanova on the murder of uh, medical student Mikhail Stoyanov uh, before the European Court of Human Rights, and this uh, ended up with a with a judgment against Bulgaria with a request and uh, of Bulgaria to change the to change the criminal code of Bulgaria. This international tool was used. We, uh, as Daystvia, participated as 30 party intervention in this and Bulgarian Housing Committee in this um, in this uh, judgment. But meanwhile, what we have been doing as an um, uh, organization is we, for the last five years, we've been training police officers, uh, sensitivity training of police officers, to prepare these police officers when the when the legislation is there, so uh, from 2018 until 2024, when the this legislation is already into force, we have over 400 police officers, in, investigative police officers around the country, and they are ready to investigate. We've created focal points around the country to to reach out to these police police officers. So what I'm saying with this is um, one very big uh, aspect uh, of uh, possible uh, advancement of the LGBTI rights in the country is to invest in trainings of uh, sensitivity trainings of civil servants, of law enforcement, um, of uh, also research. Research is very, um, is obligatory uh, as a starting point from where we start from, from to fight for the rights of the community. And um, um, supporting political activities, um, uh, working with politicians, what also uh, Dimitri mentioned is in the last two years, well, may, more, but very actively in the last two years, uh, we've been working with uh, political parties from different political parties in order to uh, bring positive changes. And of course, last but not least, um, um, strategic litigation is something which is proving uh, and litigations like discrimination cases, something which is proving that there is a specific need and specific 
breach of the of the rights of LGBTI people in Bulgaria in order to prove that there is a lack of rights the only way to prove this and like to document it is uh is through signals or uh cases brought in front of the um of uh, the specific institutions Dimitri, please. yes it's my turn i guess um, um I, I completely agree with um with the Nitsam. Mm, the international leverage and international pressure is maybe one of the mm, most um, influential influential and uh, important uh, tools that we have through the decisions of the courts, through the uh, work of the European Commission and uh, uh, through any other international partners of um, the Bulgarian parties that um, uh, that are involved in um, uh, in our in our cases. Uh, what we um, also uh, what what she said that the trainings and the uh, sensibilization. Uh, on uh, uh, our problems and uh, lack of rights and um, everyday challenges is is crucial. Um, uh, we started five years ago um, a network of um, for um, diversity and inclusion businesses, and um, it's called Work It Out. And exactly with the, this. Um, with this goal to, uh, to 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 train and to to work with uh, with different companies in Bulgaria on how to tackle the topic and how, how to uh, establish and implement um, diversity policies at the workplace. And um, now we are working with uh, thirty plus companies, some of them very big international companies with. With a lot of staff in Bulgaria, um, uh, and we are convening like uh, up to ten uh, trainings every month. Uh, so I don't know how many, um, but thousands of uh, employees uh, have been uh, have passed through through these uh, through these trainings. Uh, so this is yes yeah, something that changed. Um, the environment and change minds of people. Uh, what we started last year with the prosecutor's office is also very interesting. Um, it was eye-opening for us as well. I hope for them too. Mm, and uh, yeah, this should this should continue because um, and it will. This year we have uh, two more trainings and they are already planned. And um, what we saw is that. First, they are a little bit reluctant and mm, distant, but uh, uh, when they see real uh, LGBTI people with their real problems, because we have like same-sex couples and families, and uh, like we show them mm, mm, real pe people how 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 we live, so they start thinking about the. the about the topic. Mm, so, um, yes, international support is crucial and very important. And uh, regarding funding, uh, these are some um, these are some activities that are not uh, quite well funded in Bulgaria, like the trainings, of police officers, of prosecutors, other social service uh, workers, which is super super important. Uh, another another area we are where we are I will mention two more areas that we are um, focusing now our work. One of them is uh, mental health service, uh, like free mental health services for members of the community. Uh, what we um, provide together with um, professional psychotherapists in Bulgaria. Uh, it is something which is super, super important 
And we noticed that mental health issues uh, and mental health challenges are sometimes the roots of many other problems that our community has, uh, including uh, reporting hate crimes in front of the police, which the police could be very well trained and the law could be very well written. But finally, we need um, people to come forward and um, and go to the police. Like reporting in Bulgaria is very low, and um, that's because people don't believe the authorities. Um, and the other, um, so th this mental health program uh, has been running for the last two years, and we hope we will we will keep it in the future um, as well free for the members of the community. And the other um, the other area which we will be working the next two years uh, with the support of European Commission, but there is uh, a lot of needs that has to be met, is to um, create a, a network of um, LGBTI uh, safe spaces, uh, friendly places around the country and to uh, train and work with local activists to um, have more, um, more active community outside, outside of Sofia. Because uh, I already mentioned that uh, Sofia is very, very different from countryside. And, um, and uh, we want to, uh, to change this. Uh, so um, we recently had our, our um, First, we built this uh, activist academy in Sofia, which, by the way, was funded by a German Marshall Fund. And uh, we will continue with um, with these activities in the future as well. This is uh, like a very comprehensive overview. And um, apparently trainings are uh, the way to uh, maybe change the attitudes within within the the institutions uh and uh, milan also mentioned that it's uh there is an attitude in uh in in the court system that that needs to be uh changed before expecting any 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 legal changes but i would like to um ask you milena about uh the um the approach towards those who actually uh, need uh, need support and need help in, in these cases. Uh, you mentioned that you worked on on one case, but do you uh, are you aware may, maybe also uh, the needs of, of other transgender people who are um, fighting the Bulgarian uh, the Bulgarian legal system? And uh, is there a way to to support uh, this uh, these citizens uh, from the point of view of uh, let's say the legal legal firms? Is there a capacity? Is there interest as well in uh, in those cases? Is there a discussion? Uh, there are a lot of cases. It turned out that there are a lot of cases um, of transgender people in Bulgaria. Uh, honestly, I was surprised that uh, that such a great number of people actually. I mean, by great number of people, I mean given how big Bulgaria is and given the population of Bulgaria uh, have this issue and how, how they would like to um, settle it down by finally having their gender featured correctly in their view, the way the, the gender that they perceive that they belong to uh, in their um, uh, in their identity documents. Uh, so there are a lot of cases, actually. Uh, there has been a, a, a growing frustration uh, uh, after this um, interpretative ruling or judgment that we spoke about. Actually, in my view, um, my colleague Lubinova has been dealing with such cases uh, for, for a longer time. Uh, for me, it was um, it was very impressive how after this how many people actually contacted us after this judgment to 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 share how frustrated they are, and this is how I realized that there are a lot of people who are undergoing such um, 
they, they are they have their cases pending before national courts and they were in a position in which they should decide so their their situation of insecurity was even worsened because if before this interpretative ruling there was some hope that uh bulgarian courts could um 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 allow the the change that they strive to achieve uh, after this ruling, it became highly, highly unlikely, since it has binding effect on the courts, uh, that uh, they will, um, the proceedings before national courts will have a positive uh, outcome. So they asked a lot of questions. Uh, how, what should we do in order to finally uh, settle this issue and continue with our lives? Should we waste resources before national courts or should we continue directly and apply to the European Court of Human Rights? What will happen after afterwards? What will happen to us after an eventual positive judgment of the ECHR? Um, so um, I believe that there is a need for, uh, certainly a need for professionals to be dealing with this issue, with the, with the issues of uh, LGBT and particularly transgender people, uh, because this problem is, um, there is existent and it, uh, and there are a lot of people, quite a lot of people, who uh, actually are uh, the victims, I would say, of the uh, approach uh, of the national courts and of the national authorities. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to add that um, my, my communication with those people has shown that uh, totally uh, beside the, 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 ju the judicial, beside the legal support, that they really need psychological uh, support, uh, that they're in a real need of such support uh, because, uh, because of their sensitivity, because the way, um, the way such uh, protraction of proceedings with ears affects their self-esteem, their uh, sense of dignity and uh, their sense for the future. Danica, if you'd like to add something. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I would add um, on the on the legal gender recognition. Um, and um, we've uh, now we are expecting the Yoga Europe's rainbow map to be published soon. And in the in this in the new term, the new term which is which is covering the new rainbow map, the uh, legal gender recognition in Bulgaria will be mapped as banned, uh, and this is very important for the international community um, and for the visibility of this problem. Is that the trans people currently in Bulgaria are literally non-existent um, and uh, what I would um, um, add on what Milena said is except of um, um, together with uh, legal support and psychological support the trans community needs um, uh, medical assistance because uh, the art therapy that the um, the trans community needs to take um, is basically uh, non-approachable for them because the uh, art, because it's changing the physical, but also uh, certain biological aspects is um, kind of accepted as a criminal, uh, criminal offense in Bulgaria. So most of the endocrinologists in Bulgaria are refusing to um, prescribe certain medications, um, but also support in finding, finding jobs for the trans community because um, being underrepresented and uh, their physical appearance not, um, not uh, 
being different with their ID cards um, is basically depriving them uh, to the uh, depriving them to the to the business market and they cannot find jobs and this uh, um, this is something which of course leads to um, very big rates of um, uh, of trans people living under the line of um, um, like not being able to pay for their basic needs and for like for housing for um, health insurances for um, for food even if you want. So this is something very important, which we are all going to be dealing with in the next maybe 10 years. And to also include Dimitar here, uh, there is a question in the chat uh, regarding uh, the, 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 the growth of organized anti-gender movement in Bulgaria whether you see signs of this, uh, because we, we talked a little bit more about the legal aspects, but also the, the social aspects of, of, of this problem. And uh, I just want to mention that it's uh, it's uh, pro probably one of the organizers of uh, Scopia Pride. So uh, they they are also with us today. Uh, thank you, Asya. Mm, yes, um, uh, Milena said that um, that uh, the overthrow of the uh, of the Istanbul Convention uh, somehow started this uh, anti-gender campaign in Bulgaria, but currently the word gender is even used as uh, a slur in Bulgaria. So it's um, it's absurd, but uh, that that far we 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 came with. Uh, with this hysteria uh, on this topic. And um, it's very true that um, the LGBTI uh, issues are not, mm, uh, should be uh, regarded together with um, with the broader topic of anti-gender campaign in, in Bulgaria. And um, unfortunately, Bulgaria is um, uh, prone to a very strong Russian propaganda and, um, here, the Russian propaganda has uh, surprisingly met some American evangelical uh, circles, and uh, they are very well organized and uh, very well funded. Uh, and um, actually, that's what we are mainly fighting with. Um, to maybe, yes, do, would you like to add something? I didn't want to interrupt you. No, no, it's uh, it was something that uh, Adelita said that I want to add, but it's not on the same topic. Again, because uh, we started with build this uh, a program to for uh, career consultations and uh, for specifically for transgender and for non-binary people. Uh, and uh, what we what we see that actually there there are some significant um, number of people reaching out to us from the from the countryside and from Sofia. Uh, and um, on a positive note, I would just say that in half of the cases, the, their uh, gender is recognized by their employees. So um, in the, mainly in the international companies in Bulgaria, uh, the lack of legal gender recognition uh, doesn't mean that they uh, cannot use their mm, mm, their pronouns and genders and names in 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 at the workplace. We have a few minutes left, uh, and I would like to um, maybe also refer to the upcoming European elections. And some of you mentioned cooperation with institutions that you already are um, doing trainings and you're trying to, to work at a different level, local or national. What are your expectations? Um, often in countries in Europe, uh, when we have basic uh, freedoms and rights threatened, 
whether it's like freedom of speech or, or, or human rights, uh, we have this uh, expectation that the European Union can actually do um, a better, better job in supporting um, local organizations and uh, and uh, communities that that need uh, help. Do you expect uh, any 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 change and uh, let's say more targeted efforts from the European institutions uh, with uh, with after the elections and the, with the new commission? Um, maybe we can start with uh, with Milena Dokova and then please um, each of you has around like one minute to just wrap up our discussion. Um, for 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 the last more than maybe more than twenty years, um, uh, unfortunately, um, I think we would agree that positive change in Bulgaria has been uh, the result of um, uh, of European <laughs> politics and um, of uh, European uh, of, of judgments. I mean that it's. It comes from outside. Positive change, unfortunately, comes from outside um, uh, by setting certain standards that we should um, abide by. Uh, I mean, human human rights standards. Uh, however, it is uh, in real. It should be uh, so many years later. It should be in our hands in the hands of our own institutions, in the hands of our own courts, to, um, uh, to, to make those values work because we are part of the European community. We are member state of the European Union. And as such, we should um, act as such a member state of this community. We share the same values and we should not uh, perceive them as something outside of Bulgaria, something foreign, as something which is uh, foreign to our basic roots or orthodox roots or national interest, because it's not true. So it, once we embrace them as our own um, values, uh, only through such only only this way could be possibly moving forward in my view uh, particularly uh, regarding the the LGBTI rights I believe that uh, the European authorities have and institutions have done quite a lot uh, and they have not ceased working on those topics and supporting us um, so I believe it's in our own hands to uh, to make those values, as I said, work. Denitza and Dimitri. I just want to add um, on what Milena has already said is uh, that um, 60%, for example, of the budget of uh, DASTE comes from the European Commission. And um, this might as well change in case the election do not go very well and the Commission will have to uh, take a more restrictive way and to restrict possible fundings uh, um, toward LGBTI advancement, uh, rights of advancements in uh, countries like uh, Bulgaria, Romania. Uh, so for 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 uh, an LGBTI country coming from uh, an LGBTI uh, organization coming from Bulgaria, for for the, for us, the European elections are of uh, great importance uh, to figure out the politics and the the position of the of the European Parliament and the Commission how they built on strategies on um, on legislation and on possible fundings and Dimitri your word is the last uh, yeah, I will be very brief. Um, I agree with Denitza. Our uh, funding is also coming mainly from the European Commission, besides um, some other international donors and the businesses we work with. 
but uh, changing of the policy of the European Commission will uh, really harm us, not only uh, financially, but uh, really the, this international pressure, what, which we very much count on. So um, the European elections are very important. I don't think this is understood in Bulgaria. And I don't think like they're not very popular anywhere in Europe, but in Bulgaria, the, the, the attitude towards the European institutions is maybe the lowest uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, luckily, they are together with the national elections, so there will be maybe a bigger turnout. And uh, yeah, I hope the far right parties are not going to get well represented there. So we won't have problem with that. Thank you. I would like to um, close the discussion and uh, thank all of you, uh, all our excellent speakers for joining uh, us today. Uh, this discussion aimed to raise awareness and to, uh, to, 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 to give more insights about the issues faced by the LGBTQ community in Bulgaria. Um, we really hope that uh, this is going to bring more support and, uh, of course, when it comes to uh, the discussion that we, we managed to contribute to, uh, to, to the discussion on, on these key topics. Thank you once again. Uh, the video of this discussion is going to be uploaded to uh, the uh, GMF uh, YouTube channel, so you can, uh, you can see later there and, of course, share it with your network. Wish you a lovely rest of the day and um, hope to see you in the next in the next webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.